The move toward vehicle electrification presents enthusiasts with a new frontier for high-performance propulsion for both motorsports and street-performance vehicles. The future is arriving now as we see the integration of electrical propulsion being adopted in mass at the OEM level in motorsports, where new classes and entire race series are being created, and in the performance enthusiast segment. This video provides a general overview of the common electrical systems found on an EV conversion or motorsports application and the components that are typically included in the different systems. EV electrical systems can seem complex, but if we peel away the layers, it becomes clear that it's not as intricate as one may think. Generally, these systems can be broken down into three subsystems, a high voltage circuit, a low voltage circuit, and multiple CAN networks. High voltage or HV systems are supplied by a high voltage battery, typically over 200 volts, and includes contactors, which relay power from the battery to the high voltage components like the motor inverter combos and a DC to DC converter. An onboard charger is used in the high voltage circuit to convert grid AC power to high voltage DC power to charge the high voltage battery. Common components of the high voltage system include the battery pack, onboard charging unit, contactors, smart shunt, motor or motors, and inverter or inverters if more than one motor is being used for propulsion. The battery packs are generally comprised of hundreds of individual lithium ion cells, and they're available in a myriad of configurations. These packs typically range between 200 to 800 volts, and common packs used in conversions may include those from Tesla, Chevy, Nissan, or other OE manufacturers with battery electric or hybrid electric vehicles. While technically not a direct part of the high voltage system, the charging port connects to the high voltage system and allows you to charge the vehicle from a 100 volt or 220 volt outlet using a charging plug. A DC to DC converter acts like an alternator on an internal combustion engine or ICE vehicle. It's what allows the low voltage battery to remain charged using energy in the high voltage system. A smart shunt like the Isabel and Hoot IVTS series smart shunt has been used for battery management, but we incorporate and recommend including it as an integrated circuit, voltage, and temperature sensor in conjunction with the BMS. The motor or motors are what propel the vehicle, and they're controlled by an inverter or inverters. Each motor requires an inverter for operation. In this example, you see a Cascadia Motion DS250-115 dual stack motor assembly, which requires an inverter for each motor. An inverter is a type of controller that takes high voltage DC power in from the battery packs and outputs a regulated AC voltage to the motor or motors for vehicle propulsion. The AMVCU communicates with the inverter via CAN bus to control power delivery and implement both performance and safety features. And that's where the magic starts to happen. Things like torque management, launch control, on-the-fly power levels, and robust safety checks by the VCU before the high voltage system engages allow you to truly tailor the driving characteristics of your EV and prevent damage in the event of component failure by ensuring the system will not engage until all pre-system checks across the vehicle circuits are completed and it is verified that everything is working correctly. Most enthusiasts will be familiar with the low voltage circuit, since this system is common to internal combustion engine vehicles to power lights, accessories, and the like. One of the many advantages of EV conversions is the ability to retain an internal combustion engine vehicle's existing low voltage system. As we mentioned, a DC to DC converter converts power from the high voltage circuit to charge the 12 volt battery, which supplies power to the low voltage ancillary devices. But these devices still require a method of control, and unless you want to rewire your low voltage accessories to individual switches, we've created a more elegant solution in our PDU-8 power distribution units. A great thing about CAN bus is that it allows you to control 12 volt switch devices with our VCU using PDU-8 power distribution modules placed strategically throughout the vehicle. So, instead of wiring to individual switch functions with multiple relays for each one, you can wire your switched functions to a PDU-8, connect your PDU-8 to the VCU using a simple two-wire CAN connection, and then program and control their functions using AEMCAL software for the VCUs. These small, robust units can be daisy-chained to control multiple switch devices, allowing you to place them closer to the functions they're controlling for easier wiring. And since the programming is done in the VCU, there's no need to carry dedicated spares for each module. At the rear of the vehicle, you can see a PDU-8 that is programmed to activate the inverters and the cooling pump, 
and control the activation of the taillights, blinkers, and reverse lights. A second PDU-8 near the front passenger seat footwell controls the CAN keypad and digital dash display, while two additional PDU-8s at the nose activate the contactors for the high voltage system and control the headlights. CAN bus networking allows multiple devices to share data across a two-wire network, which greatly simplifies wiring. Our VCUs are able to transmit and receive data from multiple CAN networks, which allows them to supervise multiple components to ensure optimum performance and safety. The VCU 300 is receiving data from two CAN networks and communicating with the laptop on a third network. One network communicates with and receives data from the motor inverters, cooling pump, and PDU-8 power distribution units. From this network, the VCU can command the inverters and direct the control of switch devices through the PDU-8 modules which control everything from the wake state of the vehicle and activation of the cooling pumps to regulate battery temperatures to commanding drive mode through the VCU programmed CAN keypad and controlling the lights, blinkers, and other accessories. The ability to connect multiple CAN networks is another reason we call our VCUs the adult in the room. With AEMEV, no longer do enthusiasts have to rely on a quote, alphabet soup model of control for their EV where the devices on each subsystem operate independently and do not communicate with one another. Our VCUs and CAN expansion devices like our PDU-8, CAN keypad, digital dash displays and battery management system integrate all of these systems and the VCU receives data from every device. This allows calibrators to achieve a level of control, performance and safety on par with OE vehicles. With proper setup, the days of welded contactors, overheated batteries, and overcurrent shutdowns are over. Combined with safety features like redundant pre-checks of the systems before startup, voltage regulation to the motor based on battery temps, safety checks on pedal sensor voltages, and more, all ensure that your EV conversion is as enjoyable to drive on your commute as it is at the next car cruise or track day.